This video is going to be a little bit scatty and scattered and unorganized. I've been meaning to make a video like this for a long time. The reason why I haven't done it is because it's really, really hard to try and organize a topic like this and it might even involve having to make another video later on down the line. There's just so much to talk about and I could separate it into like even a series of a death, a death series. Like I wanted it to be a sit down sort of thing so it feels like you're talking to a friend. I didn't want it to be formal. I didn't want it to be about me like me sat here going so I'm your therapist and I'm gonna go through the stages of grief because I asked on my Instagram story what kind of things of grief do you think is important to mention and to talk about for a video. I was introduced to death like in during an age where I didn't really realize what it was and I could come to terms with it easier that way because when you're a child you just accept things a lot easier I think. You just take life as it is when you're a kid and then like I would have different family members kind of leave and die at different points in my life and I would just slowly start coming to terms of it in a little like a very gradual sort of process but it wasn't until I got older I realized I've had quite a lot of experience with it in comparison to a lot of people around me um, a lot of people would say I've never lost someone in my family like I don't know what it's gonna be like when I lose someone close to me or if they have lost someone they weren't very close with them or they were very young so they didn't really understand it so it got me thinking like I feel like I have a lot of stuff to share and say and also different ways of people dying in my life have been so varied from one another because I've had a death where someone was taken away from me really unexpectedly and it was a shock to the system and a shock to everyone involved. Uh, I've had people get ill in my family so it was like a process of watching them kind of get ill and change as a person and then eventually die over a long time and then I've had over a short amount of time. Um, I have The only thing I don't think I have had is younger people like I've never experienced someone really young dying and I think that is a whole different ball game if I'm honest. When I was alive anyway, um, I had a sister of mine that died but I wasn't around for that. I feel like with the different types of grief that I've had, I can share a few different experiences and a, sh a, through a few a few different cases because I will say every death that you, that you will experience in your life is different from the rest. So you might have someone die in your life and you got over it relatively quickly, like you just came to terms with it relatively quickly or you may have experienced a death in your life that you never ever ever can get over and you are angry every day, you cry all the time about it. That won't be the case for the next time you experience someone dying. There will be there will be different elements to it, like you will feel different emotions, you may be a little bit more frightened the next time someone dies, you might get more anxiety with that death or you might experience relief with another death if you know someone who was ill for so so long. Like every single death just comes with different emotions and that is the first thing I will say to people, don't ever, ever, ever feel guilty about the way you are experiencing somebody dying because there is no wrong and right answer. It's the same with, with breakups. There is a stages of grieving, there's a stages of you know, getting over someone if you're breaking up with them. There's stages of all these different like emotional experiences you'll go through in life for sure. Like people have studied it, which I think is a good thing in a sense. Like it helps people understand that that there are stages and it's okay to experiencing to experience things that you didn't expect to experience during mourning, such as anger, even happiness, even happiness. Right in the middle of your mourning process, you can experience happiness and then go back to anger again. At the same time, I don't think you should expect yourself to do the typical stuff that a um, therapist or like whatever, some sort of expert on grieving will tell you that you're going to go through. And I purposely didn't look up the typical process for this video because I wanted this video to be a personal conversation. If you wanted to find out the black and white way of grieving, then you can look it up online. I'm sure there'll be loads of websites that will tell you that. Sometimes you can skip stages and then go back to the beginning again. It's like, it's, it's not linear. It's like jumping around here, there, everywhere. And there's no wrong or right. It depends also on the people you have around you. Like sometimes we bottle things up because we have family members that we don't want uh, being upset because we're upset. So if you are a mum and you experience death, that's gonna be a lot harder, no, that's gonna be a lot different than experiencing death as like a child or a teenager or someone 
in a place or somewhere in a place where you didn't have people relying on you you know there's there's different reasons why as an adult experiencing death you might fall into relying on alcohol or smoking more and obviously that's going to affect how you cope with the death therefore emotions that you experience are going to be different because you're kind of relying on something and that will maybe uh, compress feelings a little bit more and uh, drinking alcohol a lot is going to make you lash out and maybe your anger stays is gonna last longer and sometimes it will never leave. Grieving someone can actually change them for life. Out of everything I'm gonna say, I think the biggest part of of death that we should remember is that it's fundamental to stick together. It's so important to be there for other people, not just for them, but for yourself. The more focus you have on those around you and the more comfort you find in friends and family and colleagues and whatever it is, even if they are going through it with you, that's that's going to be as helpful as someone who doesn't know the person that died, right? We just need to look out for one another, you know? A lot of people will know the term uh, fake it till you make it. And in a weird way, I've always liked the idea of pretending you're you're okay for other people. I know and not everyone will agree with this. Putting on a brave face for other people, I think really, really helps me personally because I feel like over time, I start to believe it too. If I was left in my own in a room during the whole years of experiencing grief, I would probably run rings until I've turned into a ball, into a mess, because I need the distractions. I need to be distracted by other people who are also dealing with it, so I can help them organize a funeral, so I can take them outside and do something fun with them, to try and forget everything going on, um, so I can put on a brave face and be distracted by trying to help them, you know? Distractions are really, really important. Uh, for example, I had a granddad who died on Christmas Eve. Well, Christmas Eve, Christmas morning we weren't really sure that was more about kind of the time period you know like my mum imagine experiencing that like your, your your dad's about to come over for Christmas day which he never usually did and it was a big deal and you know he, her husband came home and, and had to say to my mum he wasn't alive like he's dead that's going to affect every single Christmas for the rest of your life if he hadn't died on Christmas sure she's always going to think about her dad but it's not going to be as much of a, of a constant reminder. I personally feel, I, I focus still so much on losing my dad's mum so often and you, you could ask like my partner, like I always talk about her, I always mention her. Things remind me of her all the time. Uh, I really respected who she was, what she stood for and how she was as a person. And therefore like I focus so much on trying to be somebody like her that is going to make me think about her death quite a lot because she's not around me anymore. So there are many different reasons why someone will linger around in in your life a little bit more. I I've always believed that people don't people don't truly die until we we choose to stop talking about them. My mum's always said that like she she finds it so sad how there are people who have existed and now no longer are remembered by anyone because the the generations afterwards slowly slowly fizzled out and you know there's no one left to remember their mark and what they did and that's an interesting thing to think about in a world we have now where we're making digi digital footprints and there are ways of there will be ways of us to remember people in the future like people will people remember me who didn't ever meet me because i have evidence of my life when i always talk about my grandma as much as it will probably frustrate my partner because i'm always talking about her i'm sure it doesn't but i'm i'm keeping her alive i'm keeping her living adam's gonna adam knows a lot about her and a lot about why i loved her and stories i've told him and i'm gonna tell my kids those stories and hopefully they're going to they're going to impact them enough to tell their kids and so on and so on. So I think it's a really nice way to deal with death. <laughs> Changing the way you see things up a little and remembering that you're not always thinking about that person, therefore you're thinking about death and therefore you are sad and um, you should start crying. Like, it's really important, I think, to detach the death 
part away from somebody who you're grieving in your morning over years obviously this takes some time to do this but f the biggest um chunk of grieving is always going to be the part where you're attaching the actual part of death happening to that person to the person right and it's only until you can start detaching that you come to terms with things a bit more and you remember them for who they were as a person rather than the fact that you don't have them around anymore. And I believe I can do that with my dad's mum now because it's been a while. I lost her when I was in like last couple of years of high school. I think I was in my last year or the year before last. She got ill and um, I never, I never saw her in hospital and my sister did. And I think about that every so often, not a lot, because I I am still confident that I would still do the same thing nowadays, but I do think about that every so often because I'm like, was that a selfish act to make? And that was one of the things that put some, I've, the first thing I wrote down actually that someone mentioned in my story um, to talk about is the guilt feeling that happens when you didn't see them one last time or hug them one last time, feeling like you weren't there enough for them before they pass. This, this will vary depending on the situation. You know, if they just, if they just died instantly and you, you had no idea, there is no other way the situation could have played out. And that's a really massive part. I think a lot of people probably have therapy for that exact reason. They assume they could have done something about it or they could have said goodbye or they could have had a nicer finishing conversation. They could have finished things on nicer terms. You know, there are so many things like just even they could have hugged them a bit longer before they died and there is no way you are to know when someone is going to leave your life and I think because I've experienced so many people in my family die I remember that more often and Adam laughs at me and says I'm really morbid when I say this but every time you talk to someone every time you say goodbye to someone I feel it's important to treat them as if it was the last time you do see them that does sound morbid i get it but i've experienced a lot of deaths and a lot of feelings of when was the last time i said something to them like it was at this moment where my microphone just turned off but it'll be back in a bit so bear with the shite quality audio thank you my nan was one of those people that never ever complained she was happy as larry about life and she was cheerful and my mum said it was the hardest thing to watch someone so naturally cheerful turn into someone who wanted to give up who didn't want didn't want to do it anymore and just the story she told me sent shivers down my spine and i remember just being like I don't want to go and see that. I don't want to go. Like the the reason why I talk about my nan so much is because she she was such a cheerful human being. I made videos about her before, like stories about her, and I I talk about her a lot and probably get some people's nerves. But I why would I want to go see someone in that complete opposite energy moments before they die, aka the last time I will probably see them. And that's going to like scar my vision about them for life. But also you need to remember putting yourself in that person's shoes. Um, I think a lot of people I've spoken to when it comes to death and someone who's going through an illness, they don't actually want to see a lot of people when they're on death's door. They don't want to see people in their vulnerable state. It's, it's embarrassing. And I know someone in my family who didn't want to see people when they were ill and they were very embarrassed about it. And I remember my dad, my dad being my dad, he just burst, not burst in the room, but he was like, no, we're gonna have a sit down and we're gonna chat about everything else but what you're going through. We're gonna have a drink. I'm not embarrassed to see you. I, like, you were one of my best friends. My dad's approach was a lot different to mine and there's not a wrong and right way about about doing something you know um just have your wits about you really like if you if you know that person doesn't see many people like are they sat in a hospital bed like hours on end staring at a wall like would they appreciate the company do they have people around them right now um if they do would um it be beneficial for them to be visited uh, by you would it be beneficial to you to see so to see somebody who is probably in their well is in the worst state they have ever been in in their life you know they're they're probably going to be half the weight they were before they're probably going to look very different it's probably going to be something that you remember them as for the rest of your life it is important i think to be a little bit selfish if i am going to be honest you're going to be affected more than they are when they die obviously and that is something you need to take with you for the rest of your life. However, 
there are some things I will say about once someone somebody has died something that my mum or dad once told me I can't remember who relatives that you didn't necessarily know very well or were very very close to I think it's weirdly important to have that experience as your introduction to death because it is so much more hard hitting to witness your immediate parent, your mum, your dad, you know, the woman that carried you at the first point in your life and helped you and taught you and made you develop into the person you are today die right in front of you and get your first experience. I mean, that's not always going to be the case. I'm not saying like your, your parents are always going to be the people who die um, last in your life, unfortunately. I get that. But what I'm saying is a lot of people have to face that choice of whether they choose to see their uncle, their great uncle, their great grandparents to see their physical body, you know, lying there. And, and that's a choice you're going to have to make. And it's also a choice of like guilt. Like, should I be saying my final goodbyes there? Like, is this something I want to do for myself? Like that case, especially like is difficult because it depends what you believe in, but you're not necessarily going there for them. That is more so about you, I believe, personally. And that's coming from someone who believes in the afterlife. Like, I don't believe you have to stand in front of a, a body to say goodbye. I also don't think that experience is going to do anything for them. Like, their soul has left their body. Whether you believe in the afterlife or not, they're not there in that body, right? So that experience is something you're gonna have to think about for your own sake. However, I think that it is important to kind of experience seeing your first body, this is morbid as hell, with someone who you weren't as connected to and as strong or didn't know as much and i mean that in the nicest way possible um i don't want anyone to get offended by that like obviously seeing anybody is going to be a really tough experience but it's kind of getting you used to the 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 inevitable thing called death and <sighs> this is a weird thing to say i'm sorry like i don't want this to sound rude i know everything doesn't work out as great as that and sometimes we can experience someone dying right in front of, up, front of us at seven years old and it's our mum you know like if things do work out in um, a better way for you if you are in a better situation then to, to make the most of that because not everybody gets that opportunity I suppose to gradually introduce themselves to to grief and mourning. When I try and think of, of stages that I personally experienced, um, for me it's always the initial stages of disbelief. It's kind of like disregarding it even happening. So the moment someone tells me someone dies, I mean I obviously will probably cry and, and I'll be in like a, a stage of panic and everything, but there will be a part of, there will be a big chunk of me that doesn't really believe it. It's like a form of disbelief and it's, I guess it's your body kind of trying to protect you and trying to help yourself by, um, choosing mind over matter then my mind goes kind of into anticipation like anticipating upcoming change that's going to happen in my life and how and what this means like what does losing this person mean how's their wife going to be how are we going to do this like traditions that we have like that's going to change that's going to be different like the aspects in your life that suddenly get touched and affected because of this person leaving your life like what's my mum going to do that was her that was her mum like how was she going to cope and this is going to get a little confusing now because I've already mentioned my mum's dad who died on Christmas Day, but I am now talking about my mum's stepdad, so her other dad, but I saw them both as her real dads, which is why I just said my mum's dad rather than my mum's stepdad. <laughs> when I lost my mum's dad, she, uh, he went before my nan and I was like, how's my nan going to cope? Like, And that, that death haunted me a little bit differently to the rest because I remember hearing my mum, uh, my, my nan and granddad telling each other they loved each other and he was on his deathbed basically. He was getting more and more ill and my nan was at his bed saying, please don't leave me, please don't leave me. And I had to hear that, like I didn't mean to hear that. I just heard, I was in the kitchen at the wrong time, wrong place and I heard it from the bedroom and that like haunts me so much and I hear that in my head over and over. And, and if I didn't hear that, would his death affect me as much? Like, would I think about his death with sadness as much as I, I do now because of that? It's tiny little experiences that can change the way you, you think back to that person. Anyway, then a lot of a lot of uh, focus goes in on people around you, trying to help each other out, 
staying together as a family, you know, sorting through all a person's ho like house belongings, trying to support each other uh, emotionally, and also either that could be like explaining to children what's happened, staying strong for children, and a lot of focus on other people really, really helps you come to terms yourself as well. And you're preparing for the funeral together as well. Sorting so much out for a funeral will help you kind of grieve because you're you're um, not thinking about it for a while. You've got so much to do for the funeral. I think the funeral is when reality hits and that's the next stage of grief for me. That's realizing it's happened and it's a, it's a form of release. Like you've been building up, I don't know how many of you have organized a funeral, but you go digging up all these like interesting facts about this person and you're learning kind of new things about someone after they've died, which is really sad. But, and then the funeral is like the release of it. Like it all comes out, it's all done. Then you suddenly think, holy mama. Like for me, the stage of reality hits Every single time in every grieving process I've had, the minute I walk into that funeral service and I see their picture at the front on the screen or in a frame or whatever it is, that is the very moment it hits and I realize that person is gone. I'm never going to see them stage. It's that really cold, strange, off feeling of something's not right like your body kind of kicks in this feeling of it's unfair it's it's brutal it's the reality of life that we all live in it's something that we all have to go through and it's inevitable it hits differently and this is also the process where things get a little bit spiritual for me um because obviously what i say about death is going to be a little bit different from from those of you who believe that once once you die you die but for me this is where a lot of my faith comes in a lot i i rely a lot on my faith and suddenly i get supported by a lot of my faith and a lot of people do tend to say to me are you into the afterlife uh, are you a spiritualist because of support and because it feels nicer and feels Feels better. I always say no, it just feels right. That will always be my answer to that question. However, um, when it comes to the comes to it, when it comes to, to someone dying, my faith naturally obviously will help that. You know, asking myself things like, what are they doing? What are they thinking? That's something I do at funerals. <laughs> Every time I'm at a funeral, I'm kind of like, are they here? Are they watching? What are they thinking? And although I tried to say to myself, they're probably gonna hate me if I'm crying right now, I still cry. And then straight after that, it's focusing on, on the adjustments that your life experiences. It's focusing on how things are changing in your life because of that death, depending on how close you are with that person, but it's adjusting to your everyday life things. And for me personally, that part hit hardest. For my mum's parents, that, that hit hardest for me the most because I had so much involvement with my grandparents. Um, I saw them all the time. Their house meant so much to, to me. Obviously, like when you think of a person, when you think of a friend, when you think of someone you're really, really close to, you don't just think of them as a person. You think of them and their dog or their partner and in their house, in their home, like all the things that are familiar to do with that person. That gets taken from you as well. You don't just mourn the actual person and their personality and their voice and the way they act. You're mourning everything about their life that no longer is involved in yours. So that really hit hard for me with my nan because we we used to go to hers all the time. She'd have dogs running after her feet. We'd see her every boxing day would be a massive thing at her house. Like she'd decorate in the same way every single year. Um, my granddad used to dress up as Santa Claus for us as kids. And that was such a, it sounds so stupid to you lot, but that was such a massive part of my childhood. My nan was actually still alive and my granddad was still alive um, when I started to mourn them. But you can mourn people before they've died. And that may sound crazy, but that's another that's another type of grief. That's another type of loss. I felt like I lost my nan three times. My granddad twice. Um, my nan three times because um, they had to they had to downsize from the house that they lived in. And that was the house I was telling you about, right? So they moved into a bungalow and I um, kind of saw their life deteriorate before their eyes and my nan got really sad. I won't go into too many de details because it's private stuff, but my nan got quite upset. My nan got quite sad about the fact that she had to say goodbye to a big part of her life and she kind of knew what that meant, you know, like she didn't like to come to terms with death or, or like getting old, you know, and I l saw so much of her go with that house and it was so, I didn't tell anyone this. I think I might tell my sister, but Maybe I did tell my mum, I don't know, but I found it so hard to visit my nan after that time. And I, I, I hate to say this, but I saw her less than I 
wanted to because I hated going to see her. It killed me every time because she she didn't seem happy and my granddad was getting ill which is why they moved and they were just the same people and I should have just treated them the same because they were the same people and they like I should have treated them differently just because they're sat in a different house you know that sounds stupid but I felt like I lost them once and then my granddad got ill and my granddad died and this just doubled this tripled like my nan was half the person she was before she I lost my nan twice I did not expect, I mean, I, ex I thought I might get upset in this, but I felt like I was in a good mindset. And then I really didn't want to see my nan as much. <laughs> and that sounds horrible, but I found it so hard to see her. We were really, really, really close. <laughs> Obviously, she was getting older. And when someone's been with someone your entire life that you've known them, you don't just know them as that person. So I would never just say like, let's go see Nan. It would always be, let's go see Nan and Granddad, obviously. So it was weird to just suddenly see her as like half a person. So anyway, man up Ellie. This is what I mean, right? I, I this morning I would have said, I'm fine, but it hits you. It hits you again when you remember things, when you talk about things. I still cry about my dad's mum who, who died years and years ago because I see something or hear a song. Oh my God, my dad's mum with music. If I hear songs, because she used to sing all the time, it just kills me. And I just, I turn into Ellie day one after hearing she died again. Like you don't know, it's unexpected. It hits you and it's up and down. It's here, there, everywhere. You think you're okay one moment, then you don't. Anyway, you can lose someone before you've properly lost them. That's for sure. And that hits differently. And sometimes that's a little harder if I'm honest, because you, you they're still there physically, but you are experiencing pain from, from not having their entire self there. And that goes to the same as when you lose someone through dementia. When someone dies who has dementia, you lose them twice because when they're alive, you constantly are seeing them as a fraction of the person they were before. And that's a whole different story. There's just multiple, multiple ways of experiencing death. Get it, com coming to terms with my nan's death was such a long process because it's it's it was in so many stages. You know, it was losing her house, losing her husband, and then losing her. I totally skipped over the fact we then had to take on her dog after she died. So that was another constant reminder of her being there and around even though she had died. So then we had to go through the death of her dog too. So it was just, yeah. <laughs> and when she died, like, my air freshener just went off. I know, it's hard, right? <laughs> she was the last connection I had to my childhood. That was the last shred of, of that part of my life I had. And it went, and I I, I dream of my, my nan and my granddad so much. So I feel like they are around and I feel like there's a reason that I dream of them more. I think they ha they, ha they were attached to such a big part of my personality and I think that's why that hits more differently when it comes to adjusting my life. I adjusted to my, my new life after like my uncles died and my dad's mum died. I adjusted to, to new life gradually and it, it hurt and it did suck, obviously, but that process was quicker because there wasn't so much of me that was attached to that part of my life. Maybe I wasn't around their house, their home as often, or I didn't see them as often. <sighs> um, I will probably always cry and always get upset when I remember stuff about them for the rest of my life. And it still is weird when I say that because I've just thought then in my head that I'll see them again in this life and I won't. And that's so weird for me to, to think about that I will never see them again standing in front of me. That sen still sends shivers down my spine. And as something so black and white as death, like death is so straightforward. We're here and then we're not. That's death. Yet it is the hardest thing we will ever come to terms with. It is the most simplest thing, but the most complicated to understand because I still think I'm going to see them. Why do I think that? Why does my brain think that? I'm gonna have to leave this video here. 
I just want to start and I just want to start an introduction I want to start a talk I want to open a discussion and then I really want to focus in on the things that you guys have spoken about maybe even individually as as videos I'll have to group them up into topics I don't really know there's so many things for me to talk about losing pets that's a massive thing and and people will say no it's not I have no words for you how to emotionally support family affected that's such a big topic people disregarding grief years later good and bad coping mechanisms uh do you think they know how much we miss them how to let your own emotions out trying to be strong for other people i think if i make like a couple of or maybe three videos about grief and mourning i will eventually cover all of those things i think because it's naturally i have in this video so maybe i should keep it as a chit chatty thing i don't really know what this is this was but i really appreciate you uh listening because it was a bit of a mess um feel free to to keep the conversation going in the comments i think this should be talked about more than it is more than we do it's the only thing we we're promised death right and we don't talk about it it's weird um so feel free to do it on my channel <laughs> subscribe to this channel to be notified every time i make a new video about death <laughs> no about all these fun things that i do talk about usually that, I'm, that are cheerful and not miserable and i will see you for my next video everyone loads of love from my house to yours